black hair has actually defined black womanhood in a lot of ways across this experiment called the United States. It was a weekend like none other for our very own Demetria Ovalor. A Facebook post ignited a serious conversation worldwide. The controversy is coming from people who are too happy with the way that I look on television, saying, oh, her body is too big for that dress, or she's too curvy, or her hair is unprofessional, it's crazy, we don't like it. So I really want organizations to understand that natural hair is much larger than you may think, and that there are unintended consequences and or landmines that you could be stepping on when you try to develop policies that prevent or constrain Seven-year-old Lamaya Cameron showed us last week how she was playing with her hair when her first grade teacher at Congress Elementary cut one of the braids with his scissors. She told me to stop playing with it. And they cut it off and sent me back to my desk. The state of Texas sent me a letter saying, we heard that you're braiding and you can't braid. I look around and there's seven cops standing in the shop ready to cut. why I'm natural. I was wondering, can I touch yours? My hair. Yeah. Can I touch my hair? Yeah. Why? It just, it looks so interesting. I always ask to have white people, can I touch it? It's so pretty. Black women did not used to be the standard of beauty. So we had to wrestle a lot. We had to fight our way up to say what we have is beautiful. Hair used to reflect consciousness. And so anybody with an afro, you indeed felt that they were conscious. I've never met any man who's ever been like, I hate your hair. I love a woman with natural hair, <laughs> first and foremost. I'll, I'll prefer it. Perms are going to end up in the Black Art Museum, <laughs> as my friend said. Like, nobody's doing perms anymore. I think most people are trying to be natural, even if they're going to have straight hair.